Hello and welcome back. Before diving into the code editor today, uh, indulge me briefly as I introduce you to the JavaScript programming language. Uh, since this will be a big series about JavaScript programming, it will be hard for me to start explaining variables, data types, uh, functions uh, without first helping you understand uh, the fundamentals of programming itself, uh, what JavaScript language can do uh, and how it runs. So in this video, I will teach you the requisite knowledge and then we will jump into the code editor to start explaining uh, some JavaScript uh, centers, rules and conventions. And uh, my aim for this JavaScript series is for you to gain sufficient knowledge and experience to write a simple uh, yet elegant string of code to perform any task, okay? And at the end of this series, I believe you should be able to write uh, production-ready JavaScript programs of any size and complexity. So what is programming? Programming in simple terms is the heart of expressing solutions to problems uh, using a set of instructions uh, known as code, uh, which a computer can execute to carry out uh, specific tasks, okay? And uh, these instructions are created using uh, programming languages designed to be easily understood by humans and computers. And uh, honestly, a significant amount of time and effort is usually invested in finding and perfecting solutions in programming, okay? It's not just about writing the code and then you just run it. No, sometimes, or let me say, oftentimes you're going to run codes and it will not work because there is a bug somewhere and you will spend time debugging and debugging before it works. Uh, and sometimes the complete understanding of the problem itself only comes through programming uh, that solution for it, okay? And uh, in the example shown here, the problem is to pick two random people from a list of five men and four women. Uh, I, I have programmed a solution for it and we shall see shortly that the solution indeed runs okay. Uh, I believe some of us may be familiar with some of the names in that list. Uh, anyway, so um, why learn JavaScript? Okay, so uh, learning JavaScript can open up many new career opportunities, especially in uh, web development uh, with the increasing demand for skilled developers who can create uh, engaging and easy to use uh, websites. A firm grasp of uh, JavaScript can be a valuable asset. And as you become more proficient in JavaScript and its associated frameworks, uh, you will be able to pursue uh, higher paying roles in the tech industry. Uh, many companies are willing to offer uh, competitive salaries to developers uh, who can create exceptional web applications that are uh, both visually appealing and feature rich. Okay, so by dedicating yourself to learning uh, this language, uh, honestly, you can discover uh, exciting new career paths in the ever evolving world of web development and even specialize in both uh, front-end and back-end uh, programming. So let's uh, dive deep into JavaScript uh, language a little bit. Uh, so uh, in 1995, Brandon Hike created the JavaScript programming language to, uh, to make web pages come alive since most of the pioneering websites at the time uh, on the internet were static pages and uh, they were built mainly with HTML with no interactivity with the users. Uh, it was initially named LiveScript <laughs> for that matter, right? <laughs> so JavaScript was initially called LiveScript and uh, it was later renamed uh, to JavaScript to leverage Java's popularity, okay? Uh, which is completely different programming language. Yeah, Java is a completely different programming language, okay? Because some people confuse this together with JavaScript. They think Java and JavaScript are the same. No, they are not, okay? Anyway, so in the web browser, uh, JavaScript enables uh, various functionalities uh, such as animations, forms, and other dynamic elements. Uh, JavaScript runs seamlessly uh, in the browsers and also shine uh, on the server side, okay? Uh, that's thanks to uh, the rise of Node.js. And quick tip, 
in web development, the code base that controls what the user sees on the web page is the front end code. And the front end code also manages data collections from the users. Uh, the code base that manipulates uh, collected data and the data uh, database itself is the back end code. And Node.js is a JavaScript runtime for uh, that gives the environment for JavaScript programs to run. And we shall cover that in great detail later, okay? So let's see how uh, JavaScript works in the browser. So uh, generally, JavaScript can be executed on any software or device with a special program that we call JavaScript engine. The engines are embedded in browsers and their sole function is to pass the scripts then so basically when I say pass the script, I mean it read the program that we have written and then it compiles it to machine code, which the computer understands because the computer does not understand your code. It only understands the machine code, right? Zeros and ones. And then it's uh, the processor in the computer runs the runs the zeros and one. OK, uh, we have a V8 uh, engine in Chrome, Opera and Edge. We have the Spider Monkey engine in Firefox, and we have the uh, JavaScript core in Safari. Okay, in Safari browser, I like uh, Chrome, the Chrome browsers. I mean, I mainly use the Chrome browsers, even though I have Safari. Anyway, I don't know why. It's a personal preference. Okay, so JavaScript can do everything related to web page manipulation, interaction with the users, and the web server. Okay. Uh, for instance, JavaScript can add new HTML to the page, uh, change the existing content, and modify HTML elements style. And uh, it can also react to user actions like run on uh, mouse clicks, uh, mouse over, etc. Uh, just like you know, I'm trying to simulate in this uh, on this slide you are seeing currently. So when I move to the next slide, basically it's trying to simulate a button click. Yeah, an HTML element is displayed, uh, basically showing that on the on the on click events uh, triggered the HTML element to be created. Okay, and JavaScript can do a lot more fun stuff. Okay, additionally, JavaScript can send requests over the network to remote servers, uh, downloading stuff. You know, all those things are you know able to happen with the power of JavaScript and also uploading of files. Okay. And JavaScript can get or set cookies and remember the client's local storage data. The client's local storage data is basically talking about you, right? <laughs> you and I. So most of these uh, companies, basically all websites, or let me say uh, many websites use your local storage to store temporary data, right? Like user session, you know, like, um, well, user session is mostly stored on the server, right? But things like maybe the volume that you are currently uh, using with your YouTube or maybe, you know, things that is mainly temporary. They don't want to push those things to their server because you can change your mind anytime, right? Anyway. Okay, let's have a fun challenge. I want you to open any browser and go to any page. Once you are there, right click and click inspect to open the developer console. Then click on the console tab, paste this code and press enter to see the two random people your computer selected for you, right? Uh, let's see what you get. The link to download the code is in the description of this video or you can simply type it uh, if you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter <laughs> anyway. So uh, I will also run the code in the next class uh, where we shall go straight into Visual Studio Code to start explaining uh, the fundamentals of JavaScript programming. Okay, uh, see you there and uh, have a nice day. Bye.